Welcome to today's webinar on Checkout Free Technology. My name is Amy Toner, and I'm the Executive Director of the NATSA Foundation. It is my pleasure to put together this education for NATSA members. Before we begin with a few housekeeping notes, I just want to make sure to thank Zippin for their time and resources today, and Bonnie and Vivek will be on in a minute. Um, for the housekeeping notes, we're going to take questions at the end, but also know we're going to do a big fireside chat in the middle with a lot of questions that we've already gotten from NATSA members. You can drop your questions into the Q&A at any time. Everyone's lines are muted and we are recording this. It'll be on NATSA's website next week. All right, Bonnie, I'll turn it over to you. Yes, hi, uh, my name is Bonnie Milam. I'm product marketing director here at Zippin. I've been in marketing for retail and supply chain for about 15 years for a variety of um, solution providers, including NCR, Vitalix, and uh, Blue Yonder, formerly known as JDA. My focus during that time has been on solutions that service the convenience and grocery retailers, uh, point of sale, self-checkout, workforce management, and, and essentially all of the store systems. Um, I've always found retail technology really interesting, especially how innovation is always changing the way people shop and changing the way that retailers operate. So I'm super excited to be here today to talk about the accelerated adoption of checkout free um, and how it can fundamentally change retail as we know it. Uh, and I'm really excited to see the potential of this technology uh, in this industry, especially for an industry that defines itself for uh, speed and ease of shopping. Vivek? Hi, I'm Vivek Malik over here at uh, Zepin. I'm SVP and I oversee store systems. So that means the store technology which goes inside the stores, which makes this magic happen. Prior to joining Zipin, I was with 7-Eleven, where I was overseeing all the store technology, hardware, software, and operations for all the stores in US and Canada. Um, been working in convenience retail for a while and uh, quite passionate about you know, elevating the customer experience and their fueling experience as well. Uh, and here at Zipin, we have been working in this space for eight years where we have been creating this magic and we'll talk about how we make this technology happen and how this technology can help you as a retailer improve your business and elevate the shopper experience of the customers coming inside your store. So thanks, Amy, for giving us an opportunity to talk to your group members today. Absolutely. Okay, before I let the experts at Zip and dive into this topic, I wanted to offer just a brief context for why we're offering the webinar today. As you guys all know, as truck stops and travel centers, you're built on speed. Today, more than ever, professional drivers and four-wheel traffic, they wanna get in and out quickly and they expect that to happen when they stop. Um, at NASA, we've been talking about automated checkouts for a very long time, but now we know that it's instead of a quirk or a novelty, it's an expectation. So people expect to be able to get in, get out quickly and to be able to do it on their own. They've been doing it at their grocery store, they've been doing it all over and they want it to happen with you guys. So NATSO and NATSO were delighted that now there are vendors like Zippin who understand the complicated business of a truck stop and they can, you know, you guys can deliver it in a way that actually works for their business. So with that big context of why we're offering it, I'm going to turn it over to Babette and Bonnie to dive into, let's see, we're going to talk about changing expectations, labor challenges, and a little bit about margin pressures. Yeah, thanks, Amy. Um, and you're exactly right. Uh, when, when it comes to truck stops and travel centers, we're seeing a significant shift in customer expectations. And this is actually true for just about every industry that we work with is happening everywhere. Uh, people care a lot more about the food that they eat, what they put in their bodies and where their food is coming from. They care much more and value much more of their personal time. And they have a much lower tolerance for hassles or friction than ever before. So when people come into a travel center, you know, obviously it's not their final destination. They're on their way to somewhere and they wanna refuel their vehicle. They wanna refuel their bodies. They wanna you know, relax or take a break. They especially wanna find what they're looking for easily. And then they wanna get on their way uh, to wherever they're going. So anything that takes away from these objectives like an out of stock or a long checkout line or, or not being able to find an associate to, to offer assistance really detracts from the customer experience and can leave a negative uh, impression. So when we look at what's driving these changes in expectations, just like Amy said, 
it's not necessarily just the experience that your customers are having at, at other travel centers or truck stops. And it's not even the experiences that they're having just at other retailers. It's influences across their entire lifestyle. So your customers shop online, they go to concerts, they go to movies, sporting events, you know, they travel on airlines, just to name a few. And across all of these industries, technology is making it easier for people to live their lives. So whether that's mobile ticketing, digital wallets, you know, online check-in for a flight, um, you know, auto reserving a parking spot, ordering ahead food with curbside pickup or buy online pickup in store. You know, all of these are frictionless transactions uh, that your customers are seeing. And so they're beginning to expect to see them in every aspect of their life. So essentially retailers are being driven in some cases by other industries uh, to deliver similar uh, levels of convenience. So that's the first side of the coin, the people that you're serving. And then the other side, obviously, is the operational challenges, which I'll let Vivek speak to. So working with uh, convenience retailers for a while, what I have come to a realization that this is a hard business. Running a store 24-7, keeping it staffed, keeping the restrooms clean, making sure there are no spills inside the store, providing the customers what a product assortment they are looking for, whether it's you know pick-me-up drinks or or a quick stop for a restroom break, providing them you know, the quick fuel service is very important. And it has been a hard business to run and to operate prior to these challenges coming in. However, in the recent years, we have seen customer expectations are changing as Bonnie talked about. Along with that, we are seeing other challenges in the industry as well. With the inflation going up, the cost of goods has gone up. You know, what used to be a, a, a you know, the percentage of money which is going towards cost of good has gone up significantly, which puts a pressure on the on the net margins. Along with that, the rising wages has caused further pressure on the margin because you know we are keeping it. it the, the cost of running the store has gone up significantly because of the rising wages, and we are seeing at the same time with the inflation, customers are reducing their spend. They are being more proactive about where they spend their money. It's no longer about it's no longer about getting just a product. They are looking at the whole experience and they want to get a good custom, they want to get good value for their time and good value for their money. So with all these challenges, there has been a significant pressure on the net margins out of a convenience store or a truck stop. However, we have been developing technology to help improve the net margins, improve the revenues, and we are excited to tell, talk to you about how the technology can help your store financials better and enable your store to be a stronger financial business for many years to come. So going a bit into how a shopper, uh, what a shopper journey is as they approach a convenience store, a truck stop. So let's look at the lady in purple. So the lady in purple is about to enter the store. She can use her digital wallet if, you're, if you support one or a credit card and basically just simply tap her credit card, allowing the turnstiles to open, inviting her into the store. Once she's inside the store, she feels she's free to browse around, pick up any product she wants. She can put it inside a shopping cart, inside her bag, or just carry the product in her hand. Now let's look at the man in blue who's about to exit. The only thing required over here is to have the products with which you want and simply exit the store. There is no stop. There is no nothing blocking the exit. There is no checkout required over here. What this leads to is a very... A uh, quick customer experience, and we'll talk later about how we are able to serve, increase the throughput of the store, get your customers in and out quickly. And the way we enable the, all this experience is by using technology. We place cameras up on the ceiling in a store, along with shelf sensors on various shelves, and using both using uh, both the cameras and the shelf sensors, we create what we call a sensor fusion where we are able to mix the data from various technologies inside the store and build a virtual cart for the customer as they are walking around the store, as they are picking up products, and as they are putting them back, we will deduct them from their cart. And when they leave the store, we are able to charge their payment method for the items which they, which they walked out with. So this enables your customers to have a seamless, quick, checkout-free experience while still having all the product assortment which you currently support inside your stores. 
as we work with various retailers, some of the common questions which we hear about, and I wanted to proactively answer those. One is staffing. Do I still need staff inside my store? We believe that a customer, or your regular customers are not coming to the store just because of location or product assortment. Those are important, but they also have a human connection with your store. Uh, the video store associates, the store associates, you know, who have high energy, who know their customer names are often leading to better sales inside your stores than the, you know, the store associates who are new, who don't know your, who don't know your regular customers. So with that, having, uh, having staff inside the store is important to still provide that human connection to provide that elevated experience, which your customer is looking for. However, the technology enables them to not do the robotic motion of scanning the products and asking them to tap their credit card, but rather this frees your staff to interact with the shopper, to work with them, to help them find what they're looking for, to, to have that human connection to, so that which excites your customer to come back and you know, form an emotional connection with your store and have that repeat traffic. We we often get a question about restricted items. We know that alcohol and you know pick me up drinks are are a substantial uh, transactions from your store. We do support alcohol sales in a in an automated fashion, so the customers can uh, pick up their own alcohol products and you know exit. Due to various local laws, we do require a staff to check the ID. However, I'm excited to see that various states have started adopting automated ID checking solutions, you know, which they are changing the laws to allow that. And we are excited to offer that solution in future once the law gets adopted across, you know, across multiple states so that we can enable alcohol sales without a human ID checking as well. But as of now, we require a human to check the ID. Uh, along with that, we see that the convenience stores are have to change their product assortment to offer customers what they are looking for. And the big uh, demand and uh, good margins have been coming from fresh foods, whether it's cold sandwiches from a commissary, uh, whether it's baked in store cookies, baked in store pizza, or made to order items like fresh burritos with guac, no tomatoes, or fresh burgers. Zipin supports all of those methods of serving fresh food. And uh, we believe that this is a important part of the product assortment inside your store to attract the customer and to adopt to their demands in the market. So Bonnie, please tell us about what kind of stores Zipin has been working with. Oh yeah, absolutely. Thanks Vivek. So these are just a very few examples of uh, the checkout free stores that are powered by the Zipin platform. So on the left in pink, you'll see a store that operates in one of the busiest uh, airports in the United States. Uh, in the middle in purple, that is a store that we have at a train station in Florida that serves commuters and travelers. And on the, the bottom right, that's one of five uh, checkout free stores at the Barclays Center in, in Brooklyn, New York that, that runs Zipin Technology. And um, we're, again, those are just a very few stores, but we are seeing a, a, quite an acceleration of the adoption of checkout free. And, and here's some of the proof, right? So uh, 1.1 million customers have come through our checkout free stores and loved it. Uh, they get out of the store and they just cannot believe that it is this easy. Um, it's almost like a magic moment for them when they realize that they don't need to check out, they don't need to talk to anybody, they don't need to go to a kiosk, they simply have with them what they want to purchase and, and exit the store. So it's completely frictionless, it's completely contactless, and it's really fast. And um, people really appreciate the time that we give them back in their days. And in taking a closer look at just one of the stores, this is uh, one of our stores at an airport, and these results are really impressive. So this store carries about a thousand SKUs, all of the things that you typically would see at an airport store. So a variety of drinks, so water, energy drinks, sodas, a variety of snacks, salty snacks, you know, nuts, peanuts, gum, electronics, uh, earbuds, travel size, health and beauty, and even souvenirs and t-shirts and that sort of thing. Um, in the first month that the store was opened, uh, it saw an increased revenue of 36%. 
And um, the number of shoppers have increased every month since opening, showing that there is an increase in use of checkout free over time. And as I mentioned, uh, shopping is really fast. So we've all been through airports, especially, you know, busy airports at, at peak travel time. And it might take, you know, 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes to get through a store if you want to grab a drink and, and a snack before catching your connection. Um, and, you know, here we're seeing the entire shopping experience taking just a few minutes. Uh, and I just want to point out that in a uh, airport store, there's a lot of discovery and browsing that's going on. So people don't automatically know exactly what they want. So this shopping time that we're showing includes that browsing and discovery process. And for comparison, uh, in looking at some of the stores that we have at uh, professional sports venues, uh, where people are really there just for the game and the action, and, and they want to grab something quick and head right back to their seats, uh, we see an average shopping time of about 33 seconds in, in those stores. Um, and that demonstrates the, the power of checkout free, right? Your customers don't have to choose between buying something that they want and doing what they want to do, whether that's, you know, uh, getting back on the road or, you know, catching a plane or seeing a game or, or just getting on with their day. So it's, it's really, really exciting uh, what we've been able to, to give back to shoppers. Amy? Hi. So we're going to have a little chat. This is like my dream job. I just get to ask you guys questions and you get to answer. So thanks. <laughs> So we got a lot of questions from NATSO members and from staff. Like I said in the beginning, this is something that people have been asking about it, us for years. And also, I feel like now that it's like becoming, um, they're seeing it more, they they want to learn more about it. And we got tons of great questions. Put them in the Q&A, but uh, Sani and Vivek, we're going to do some more questions. Okay, you guys showcased the number of zip-in stores in your presentation. I know the one on the way to NASA Connect, we'll talk about that at the end, but are these owned and operated by Zipin, or how does that work? Oh, that, that's a really great question. Um, so we have uh, 73 Zipin powered story, stores right now across four continents. Mm -hmm. So those are stores that we've launched um, and those are stores owned and operated by the retailer okay. that, um, just uses our technology. So we enable them to give that checkout free experience to their shoppers, but the retailer uh, is fully in charge of running their business the way they want to. Okay. Labor challenges are big everywhere, but especially at check stops. Um, how does the staff's job change at a checkout free store? So in a checkout free store, we we would like the staff to focus not on the not on the you know part of scanning the items and asking customers to insert their credit card, but rather focus on connecting with the customer, helping the customer you know helping the shopper inside the store get a great experience, making sure that the store is presentable you know keeping giving them clean restrooms, making care of taking care of all the spills which happen inside the store in a timely manner, making sure that the store is clean and presentable you know it's fronted it's filled there are no holes in the product assortment is yeah. what leads to a really good store. And we would like the store staff to focus on making a great store happen. And the technology can take care of the mundane task of scanning the items. Awesome. Okay. How about an app? Do shoppers need an app? Yeah, that's another uh, really good distinction. And, and I, I appreciate that question. So, um, our customers, our retail customers like working with us because we have one of the most flexible platforms available. Okay. So um, the way that this, this works is shoppers, we, the store requires a payment method to enter the store. So just think about when you buy gas, you have to provide a credit card or a payment method to pre-authorize that you're going to buy gas. So it's kind of the same thing. So, so we take a payment method. We, we highly recommend um, using you know, credit cards, debit cards. But retailers also have the choice to use uh -huh. loyalty apps or their own mobile uh, shopping app. Okay. Um, and so, but it's really up to how the retailer wants to run their store. All we need is a, a payment option and, and we suggest the, the more the merrier, so to speak. Okay. Uh, let's talk about shrink. That's a topic that we talk about at NATSO a lot. Um, okay. So what are the shrink rates in checkout free stores versus traditional stores? Yeah, so um, one of the great benefits of a checkout free store, like I just mentioned, was that the system validates um, a payment method as the shopper walks into the store. 
So unlike um, you know checkouts or self checkouts where there's risk of error or mis scanning, you know sometimes it's, it sometimes can be hard for shoppers to to do everything perfectly right if if it is a self checkout scenario. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially, once that shopper comes into the store, we've already validated that that they're able to pay, and the, they get charged for what they leave with. So we don't care if it's in their purse, on the you know in their hand or in a bag. Um, you know, unless they like literally try to jump a turnstile or something, this is you know very low risk. Okay. And and to add to that, we are able to take care of all the promotions inside the store as well. So if it's you know buy two get one free, you know get two Red Bulls for six dollars, our system can take care of those promotions and those special pricing as well. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about how travel centers should rethink their layouts. How small or big does it need to be? So the stores can be, you know, pretty small for, you know, sometimes retailers do start with the micro market kind of concept, you know, 250, 300 square foot, which we, which is what, you know, we saw initially in the industry when checkout free started, because, you know, retailers wanted to basically, you know, bet, you know, uh, start with a small store and go from there. So we operate small stores, you know, micro markets, as well as large stores So the stores. Uh, can be any size, but from a from a store layout perspective, we are excited to see you know when retailers start looking at checkout free technology. On they have allocated close to 400 square feet space for you know their point of sales and basically you know their checkout space, and retailers are excited to see what they can do with that 400 square foot. Maybe they can you know bring in new gondolas, they can bring in more you know fresh coffee, fountain soda, or you know new options for the customer fresh juice, you know, or, or basically put in a kitchen over there so that they can serve customers uh, made to order food. So the stores can be small or big and, you know, it's, it's, it's important for, you know, as a retailer to think about maximizing every square foot inside the store to sell the customer what they're looking for. Okay. Uh, I love this question. Travel centers have periods of heavy traffic. Are there any limitations on throughput? Uh, no, there, there are no limitations on, on throughput, um, mm -hmm. again, because it's not an individual checking out at the end. Uh, it, it's really just a matter of, uh, there, there's a, no limit to the number of people who can enter the store at the same time or exit at the same time, with the exception of like literally fire codes or something like that. Um, we we have operate in 30% of the professional uh sports stadium and venues in the United States. Uh -huh. And if you want to talk, if you want to talk about throughput, um, we have stores that see, you know, 2000 people during a, you know, two to three hour game. So just right. think about halftime. Um, and, you know, our AI is intelligent enough that even if, again, like at a sporting event, if every person is in the exact same outfit and they all have the same t-shirt on or the same, yeah. um, you know, um, hat, we, we can identify, uh, you know, that they are individual shoppers, we can uh, check them out and there's absolutely no limitation. So it's really cool. Okay. All right. Especially at night, check stops can have limited staffing. Would they need someone working who is really good with technology? So uh, this, the, we do train the cust uh, uh, store associate on what actions they need to take. There is some training required in, mm -hmm. in working inside a checkout free store. However, they don't need to be well versed with technology. You know, if they know how to use a mobile app, they can work in a checkout free store. Again, we want the customers, the shoppers to focus more on the, uh, sorry, we want the store associate to focus more on the shopper experience and helping them. And it's less interaction with the technology. The technology works more or less in a self-driving mode and will reach out to the store associate if there is help required. Okay. What infrastructure requirements are required to convert a store to checkout free? The, uh, so thank you for that. So the primary uh, infrastructure requirement which we ask for is internet, internet speed and you know power. So with those two things, we are able to convert a store into a checkout free store. Uh, we do do a lot of processing, a lot of video processing on the edge itself. So our internet requirements are not as high as one would think. So depending on the store size, we are able to work with limited internet capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are able to you know, come into a store, analyze it, and look at what the store ceiling is, and essentially work out where exactly we can put you know, some of these servers in the back room so that, and put the cameras up on the ceiling so that we can start converting your store into a checkout free store. 
Do you guys see all the questions we're getting? I love it. Okay. So what type of customer transaction count does a location need to have in order to see an ROI? So it really depends on the uh, on the traffic per square foot. So we are happy to work with you, you know, for your specific store, look at what traffic you're getting and what the square footage is of your store to, to basically work out what will be the cost of converting your store into a checkout free store. And we, we are happy to work with you to see what whether that ROI fits in your business case or not. Uh, we uh, we believe it will, but we are happy to, it's just on a case-by-case -case basis, and our team is happy to work with you and specifically for your store. Okay. Yeah, it looks like he had a follow-up, which was if they had 500 users a day, so it sounds like it's more case-by-case. -case. Same with that question. Yeah, it's basically uh, depends on the square footage of the store. Of course, a uh, 2,000 square foot will uh, convenience store on an average sees somewhere around 1,000 transactions a day. So that's okay. the model which we have been working with. But yeah. depending on the location of the store, there is going to be more traffic or less traffic. Okay. More questions. I hope you guys are ready. How much space do you need? And we did kind of talk about this, but let's just answer it one more time. So, and also- yeah, I, can, I can speak to this. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, they just asked if they can use a um, underperforming area of their- Okay. Yeah, that, that's a perfect scenario. We, we see that a lot in professional sports. So um, if you think about, you know, walking from, you know, walking through a stadium and you're you're looking for your, your area of seats, there's lots and lots of open space in those hallways. And so we've had success not only converting existing stores into checkout free, but also finding an area that might have a bottleneck of just traffic where there was absolutely nothing, or maybe there was like a promotional car or something branded by one of the, the brand sponsors, where we've taken space as little as 200 to 500 square feet and put in a store. And that's, you know, 100%, uh, you know, upside on that. Okay. Um, what would the cost, what, what would be the cost involved? The cost involved in converting a store into a checkout free store is primarily a function of the square footage of the shoppable area of the store. So it's, uh, it, and the second factor which is heavily involved in uh, is the ceiling height. So going a bit into deeper into how technology functions, uh, we install cameras up on the ceiling. So essentially the higher the ceiling, the lesser the number of cameras we need, the lower the ceiling, the more cameras we need. It's a very case by case driven uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, which is, you know, we are happy to work with your store, you know, and basically, you know, do a survey and figure out how, what, how much technology is required, which is, you know, how many cameras are required up on your ceiling, and what will be the install cost to mount that many cameras up on the ceiling, run the wires so that the cameras are powered, mm -hmm. and work with that and figure out what will be the cost to convert your store and elevate the customer experience over there. We had a couple of questions about cash. You know, I guess um, people are flagging that truck stop customers like to use cash. What do you guys think about that? So we uh, currently support payment methods, which basically where we can charge the customer later. So credit and debit cards are our preferred method of uh, interacting. You know, charging the shopper once they are once they've exited the store. Uh, mm -hmm. We are able to, uh, you know, most of the times customers who use cash often have alternate methods of payment as well. So we are able to work in those scenarios and, and you know, with the elevated shopping experience, we have been able to convince the customers to not use cash, but rather use an alternate payment method. We also support a retailer store value cards. So if retailer, you know, has a digital wallet or a, or a physical card on which the cash can be loaded, we support that method of they are billing the customer later as well. And Vivek, do you want to speak about high, uh, our um, hybrid model? Sure. Yeah, we are running a hybrid model as a test from a customer, from a shopper experience perspective, you know, where the customer is able to uh, enter and basically and choose at the entrance and at the exit on whether they want to identify themselves as a checkout free customer or as a cash customer. In a in a in a cash customer, they will be using an assisted checkout by a store employee. So we are testing that hybrid model in a store and trying to see you know work out basically how the customer experience differs over there and how can we how can we get it perfected before we start rolling it out across multiple stores. Okay, 
Does this work with self-beverage walls, soda and coffee? Yes, uh, so I'm happy to say that we work with, again, you know, working through a customer experience, what the customer needs are, customers are looking for a fresh beverage, a bean to cup or, you know, fresh coffee has been a major hit in convenience stores. While, you know, we, we do, you know, have air pots in majority of the stores, today's customer is, especially the younger customer, is looking for a fresh beer fresh cup of coffee. So we work with various uh, bean to cup manufacturers so that we are able to offer that in a checkout free store. We also work with various fountain soda machine manufacturers so that uh, that can be offered inside the store along with you know fresh juices and basically you know, machines which are uh, which are uh, which are capable of offering customer a fresh drink. Okay. These are all good. Okay, in case of a power failure, what should we should we have a backup? So in case of a power failure, uh, we are able to uh, ask for UPS, essentially, you know, a battery support for running the technology uh, while the, till the power comes back or to take care of brownouts. Uh, in my prior experience, I saw quite a bit of brownouts in Florida region. So, you know, it's a, it's important sometimes to, you know, have, uh, have a UPS, a battery backup to not just take care of power failures, but also take care of brownouts. Our technology continues to function uh, or even with a network outage. So if your network goes out, internet goes out, as long as it comes back in a reasonable time, uh, we are able to keep the store running. In case the battery uh, you know, st uh, dies out as well, and now the power is not back, in that situation, we would have, we would, the automated checkout will no longer work because we do need power for our cameras uh, and sensors to record all the interactions which the customers are having with the products. Okay, more questions. How is the hardware service and how do you handle any software updates? So, uh, one of you guys, go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say, I, I can start this question uh, just because uh -huh. I haven't answered one in a while, but I, I'm gonna defer to, to be <laughs> back when things get complicated. Uh, but yeah, we offer this as a, as a subscription model. So, um, you know, you regularly, uh, as part of the, um, you know, annual service contract, you get, you know, up, updates, patch fixes, things like that. It's also, you know, monitored by our team of experts. So we we make sure that the, the health of, of the equipment and the software in the stores is, you know, um, you know, everything is healthy and working and everything like that. And um, we do have a, a full service team that that addresses those. And Vivek, you probably know more than me in terms of the, the specifics of all of that. Yeah, it's a it's an autonomous store. You know, our, our our remote team is monitoring the store twenty four seven. We are looking out for health of you know every every piece of hardware which is inside the store. We are looking at you know how AI is behaving twenty four seven and monitoring it, making sure that your customers are getting an accurate receipt at any time of the day. Okay. This is another good one. Our truck stop is close to 20,000 square feet with multiple profit centers, QSRs, and entry points, which that sounds like a lot of our members. Is that format a bad option for this technology? It's a, uh, so I'll take that. Uh, so that format is, uh, is can be, can be worked into. Essentially, it typically in a truck stop, which has got multiple QSRs, multiple points of entry, sometimes it's also multiple brands yeah. and multiple different pieces of, you know, integrations which are required so attacking it in a head-on in a way that you know all of that should work can be a pretty upfront can, can be a pretty a high upfront task of you know working through whether you know you're running a subway in there or a dunkin donuts working through all those brands can be challenging mm -hmm. uh, however we can start with you know one portion of it and expand as we go along from a technology perspective we support uh, convenience items, you know, where items are packaged items, we support, you know, cold foods, we support hot foods, we support made to order, uh, and we are happy to, you know, work with you and expand into various areas of your stores. Okay. Are you guys up for a few more? They just keep coming. Good? Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you guys talked about self or shelf sensors do we need to install those into current shelves or do you install the shelves like do you add add the sensors to the shelves or put in new shelves 
So uh, we are, uh, you know, we, we, we have been working on the sensor technology for a long time. And, you know, major, majority of our sensors are cameras and shelf sensors. As I mentioned, the cameras go up on the ceiling. The shelf sensors go up on the shelf. Uh, whether we install, whether we are able to reuse your existing shelf or not, it's primarily a, it's primarily a decision based on what shelf you currently have mm-hmm. and uh, you know how much weight you're putting on it uh, for a convenience store items uh, smaller items you know are, are much are easier to work with than you know if you are putting let's say car batteries you know that can be you know a different item to work with as compared to a smaller item like a like a peanuts so we are able to work with different technologies but whether we are able to reuse an existing shelf or not depends on the the specifics of the shelf, specifically the manufacturer and the weight rating of the shelf. Okay. All right. This is a good one, I think, to end on. What is the biggest hurdle that retailers need to overcome other than cost? Like, why aren't, why aren't people doing it? What do you hear? Uh, so I can just talk a uh, high level. I'm sure that that can be more specific, but you know, in my experience in in retail for for all of these years, um, you know, retailers are very pragmatic in how they spend their money on technology, mm-hmm. um, and they often focus on operational gains first, and you know, everything else kind of gets pushed down the road as as a nice to have, and it, it is kind of well, let's wait and see if it works, right? Because they're very pragmatic, which I think is great. Um, and then at some point they realize, oh, nice to have is now table stakes. And, and now we have to, you know, and this has happened over and over again in the retail industry. So I don't, I think that it's really kind of, you know, the, the wait and see approach and it's, they want to make sure that it works. Everyone's concerned about, um, you know, any, any new technology that it's going to be the right choice for the long term. So this is just one of those. And we're just at that very beginning point mm-hmm. where it's beginning to, to change over from that nice to have to the, oh my gosh, this is really truly going to be an integral and strategic part of my business plan going forward. So whenever I'm interviewing someone for a magazine, my, my favorite question is like the last one, right? Just like final thoughts. What, what haven't we talked about that you want to tell us? So final thoughts, Vivek. So we we talked about a lot of things and you know I'm excited to you know, see the breadth of the questions and and how much we covered. Uh, at the end of the day, my thought process is that it's about elevating the shopper experience. It's about elevating the customer experience. It's about repurposing the staff into into interacting with the customers, giving them more a more meaningful job inside your store and and using your really strong asset, which is your store associate, into elevating your sales. It's about increasing the uh, the shopper exp- improving the shopper experience, elevating that experience, which forms a connection between the shopper and your store, your brand, and and basically it brings them back to your store again and again. We are seeing consistently that um, uh, in in Zipin stores where the customer experience is so elevated that the shoppers choose to come back to a Zipin store. While you know driving in front of a con- of a competitor and choosing to not stop there, but rather come to a zip in store because they know they can get what they are looking for and they can get in and get out. The value for time has been uh, that ask has been increasing uh, drastically over the last few years, and we are happy to provide that technology which elevates your customer experience and really gives you the best value for money for your for your store associate time and helping them really provide that service, uh, that great experience, which your shopper is looking for. Okay, how about you, Bonnie? Last thought. Yeah, thanks. So um, we've spoken a lot about the checkout free technology and and how it works. And we've talked about elevating the the customer experience, but um, not to sound cliche, but this is truly an experience that you have to see to believe. Um, there's no way to put into words what it feels like uh, when we see people shopping these stores for the very first time, even if they're skeptical about it, they're just amazed. Uh, you know, it's not uncommon for a first time shopper to just stop at the exit and, and wonder what it is that they're supposed to do. Like, is it really okay that I leave yeah. the store? It, um, and uh, so I just encourage everyone to, to experience it because once you do, um, you're going to realize just how great it is for your, for your shoppers. So we visit you to uh, shop one of our stores. It, it's really going to change your impact of retail forever. And if you'd like to know more about uh, bringing checkout free to your stores, um, understanding that it's a great way to grow revenue. It's a great way to give your employees a much more fun job. 
um, stand up from the competition and also give your shopping shoppers an experience that they can't get anywhere else. Um, we invite you to reach out to our experts. We'll be happy to talk with you, visit your space and help put together a plan, the best way to get started. Absolutely, it's, it's like you teed it up. So at NASA Connect, uh, March 7th to the 10th, which I hope everyone will attend, they can also see your technology at the airport on the way to the conference, right? In Dallas? Yes. Okay, yes, absolutely. We do have a, um, mm -hmm. Yep, and you guys will have a booth there. Can one of you guys put just an email in the in the chat so people know how to get a hold of you? Um, we recorded the we, we recorded the webinar today, and I'll put it on the website so that um, people can watch it. We got so many great questions, so I'm sure that we'll put up an article on the website, and we also recorded a podcast with your founder, which is also available on the website. Um, thank you guys so much for letting me help questions at you for 30 minutes. And I we enjoyed it. Thank you very much. <laughs> I know uh, it was it was great. Thanks, guys. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Bye. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye.